Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from Impact Church. Amen. Thank you. Please. What is it? Peace. What's it going to do? It's going to result in peace. What is peace? Peace is shalom, completeness, soundness, health, prosperity, security, welfare, peace, shalom to everyone. The Greek irene means harmony, concord, safety, prosperity, felicity, and peace and harmony that makes and keeps things safe and prosperous. Peace on earth. I mean, that, that's what God has made available. Sadly, there's some people who deny that, don't walk in it, don't live in it. There's still wars, there's still nonsense. But right now, everything necessary for there to be peace on earth is already done. And it's all about the revelation of the love and the goodness of God. Second Thessalonians 3.16, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. The Lord be with you all. Colossians 1.20, Reconcile. He is going to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things in earth or in heaven. Having, having, past tense, he did, having made peace through the blood of his cross. It's done. There is glory. There is peace. And every single person, here's good news. You can live in the glorious presence of God without fear, without shame. You can abide in the very manifest, tangible expression of his person. You can abide there forever. And the result of that is absolute peace in every aspect of your life. Peace on the inside, the outside. Peace in every realm of your life is yours. And it's a gift of God. And he's brought it into manifestation for you. Please settle down. Prisca can have her, uh, you know, her uh, sciatica healed. Peace in your body. Peace in every situation in your life. That is our legal right. And the sign that it's ours is the virgin shall give birth and shall have a son. Christmas declares absolute liberty and absolute freedom. Peace. Peace. Peace in every way. So the recipients, now I just think it's interesting. Why these guys? You ever say why? Why these guys? Why these guys? I mean, why, why would you make this massive announcement, do this massive big slideshow, big thing, big presentation? I mean, all of them practicing, coming out, whoop, and we got this little group of shepherds. Why? Luke 2, 12, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby. So it can't be to us, because we're not going to find the baby in the manger. We're not going to find that. That's done. It's finished. So this was a message to them, that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So why the shepherds? And why these shepherds? Why the shepherds and why these shepherds? The interesting thing about Jesus' life and ministry, there's well over 300 prophecies about Jesus' physical life and his, his ministry and what he did. And the statistics, the, the uh, chances, the uh, ratio of, of the possibility of all of those being fulfilled it's just astronomical. It's like to the zero, 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 zero millions. One guy said this. He said that if you, if you were to go take Texas, the state of Texas, and cover it with six feet high of silver dollars. So that's Texas. Everybody say Texas. That's the state of Texas, six feet deep in silver dollars. That's a lot of silver dollars. And then if you randomly flew over Texas and you threw a coin that you planted black out over Texas somewhere, went landed the plane, and then another plane took off from somewhere else, flew around Texas, and then just randomly somebody jumps out of that plane and parachutes down, the chances are that that person would land right on that one black coin. That's the chances of all of these prophecies being fulfilled regarding this one person. And it's amazing the detail of the word of God. Even Jesus, when he was on the cross, it says to fulfill scripture. To fulfill scripture, he said, I thirst. So here he is, beaten to death. I mean, literally the beating he took should have killed him. Here he is, crucified, hanging on a cross for hours, hanging up there, suffocating, every single joint dislocated. And Jesus is thinking, what do I have left to fulfill? What else do I have to honor? What other word remains outstanding according to my life? And it says, to fulfill scripture, he said, there's still one more thing, I thirst. And it was to fulfill the scripture in Jeremiah where he said he took, the, he took the wormwood, he took the gall. And that's the scripture that says, because the father sinned, it says the children's uh, tongues and, uh, and their mouths are set on edge. And Jesus did that to say this, that now I have taken every generational issue, everything that could be passed down in any generation, I took it. I said I thirst and I drank all of that nonsense so that every single person, no longer will that be said, but now now every person can say, I have no issue with any generational thing. I am absolutely in the line of Christ and I am free. 
I mean, that was a prophecy that Jesus knew at the cross in absolute pain. He's thinking, am I doing everything that my father called me to do? I mean, if I was in that kind of pain, I would have not been thinking about anything, but just get me off of this thing. But he had you on his mind. He had the purpose of God on his mind. He was thinking, I must fulfill perfectly every issue that God has for my life. Wowzers. Why these shepherds? Why them? Micah 4, 8 says, And you, O tower of the flock. Say tower of the flock. You, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of my daughter Zion, to you shall it come, even the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Here's a prophetic word relating to Jesus. Here's a prophetic word that has to be fulfilled about Jesus. Later, in, 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 right there in the same passage, the same context, Micah 5, 8, it says, But you, Bethlehem of Ephratah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one from you, from Ephrathah, from Bethlehem, from you will come forth the one. So there's this prophecy that this tower is significant. There's this prophecy in this region that, that this tower, somehow there's something fulfilled with these people engaging this tower. There's also this town. And I mean, everything orchestrated. I mean, Joseph, born in Bethlehem, on that day had to leave Nazareth where they lived and go to Bethlehem. All of that was orchestrated by God so that every single detail of the world about his son would be fulfilled you know God is working out every detail in your life too you are set up he is looking at and attending to every issue of your life you don't have to worry about a thing God is working behind the scenes and he's always at work for good in every issue of your life when you look at the detail of how he worked out all these things for his son and he's nuts and he's mad and he did all this because he's crazy about you God works all these things out so what pastor so what So Passover lambs were specifically kept by specially trained shepherds, and they were the lambs that were born to a, a group at a place called the Tower of the Flock. That's why I said to you, the Tower of the Flock. So Passover lambs were specifically kept by these people. New lambs would even be wrapped in special swaddling clothes, certified that they were spotless, that they were pure, that they were acceptable for sacrifice. So they there at this place, at that tower, would take these lambs. They would carefully, when, when, a, when a, a female sheep was ready to give birth to a lamb, they would take that sheep specifically aside, and they would birth it carefully. And then they would examine that lamb, and they would determine right there, is this a lamb that will be used to take away the sin of the person who sacrificed it? So you remember when Jesus came to town? Remember it was on Palm Sunday? He's coming to town on Palm Sunday. Do you know what was going on on Palm Sunday? Do you know who else was walking with him? All kinds of people were walking to the temple with their little lamb. So as they're walking the temple with their little lamb, suddenly the lamb of God is coming to the temple. Why? Every lamb is coming to be inspected. Every lamb is being led. And here is the lamb of God coming to the temple to be inspected. And he was inspected. He spent several days now being questioned by the high priest and questioned by all these people. And here, what was going on at the same time was all these people brought their lambs and the, the priest would inspect the lambs and often what the priest would do is say, oh, sorry, your lamb's no good. The one you brought, not special enough, but here's good news. We have our own lambs that we have carefully taken care of and we have special lambs that are already pre-qualified lambs. But now we don't take your money either, so you have to change your money to temple money and your money's no good and, and you're... you're you're, it's like 10 of yours by one temple thing. So they were scamming people. They were scamming people in the area of their redemption. It's unbelievable stuff. But anyways, this group of people, with, outside of the scam, these people were set up to bring forth lambs that were acceptable for sacrifice. That's the shepherds that were in this region. That's what they were doing. Wow. So Jesus was born surrounded by these shepherds, set apart and certified at birth as the ultimate Passover lamb. Wowzers. And I think that's why it's kind of quiet in the text we read, but I think that's why they knew exactly where to go. I think that's why when they said it's born to you, I think they knew what their job was. And I think they also understood scripture and they understood the prophecies. They understood what they were doing. They understood that we're dealing with a lamb that removes the sin of mankind. And they knew what the angel said. Those are little lambs that you're caring for, but God has sent his lamb. 
and the lamb is going to take away the sins of the whole world. Here's the good news. That, those lambs you take care of are a type of the lamb. Well, you know what? The lamb is born today. And I think they knew exactly what was going on. And I think that's why they made haste. Say made haste. They made haste and they went. And that's why it says, I don't think it says they had to run around going, hey, go to the hospital. Hey, one kid born here was special. Or they had to run around or figure out where it was. They knew exactly where it was. Because they would take those lambs, they would wrap those lambs in swaddling clothes, and they would lay those lambs in a manger, and they would identify qualified to be a sacrifice for sin. And so these guys were sent there specifically by God as a part of the type, as a part of the pattern. They were there to certify this is the Lamb of God. And then they left there and they told everybody, our job is done. The Lamb of God is come. 